Hello everybody, my name's Jim, and this is a relationship web of the Cotton Candy Massacre by Christopher Robertson. All of these icons are from the Noun Project. I'm not sponsored, but I have an account, so I love using that for this sort of thing. It's very colorful, it's very fun. I needed to do something fun. I haven't done one of these in a while, and this book was seriously just a full-on mood read and I figured since my other relationship webs weren't really all that popular this one might be a safe one to do one for but then I realized just how big this cast was if you want character soup that is certainly in this book hopefully most of the books I read will not have 15 characters to go through so I can spend a little bit more time on everybody but first we need to start at the top we need to start with Buster B. Bonkin, a.k.a. Bonko the Clown. He is the reason all the crap hit the fan. We were introduced to him very early on through a... I was going to say ghost story. Maybe? Horror story? That a teenage girl is telling to her best friend at a slumber party, who I believe are Candy and Lee. I'm not so sure. But I have... All of Bonko's lines connected to everybody that he affected. The reason why all the crap hit the fan was he was having an affair with Mariana, who was married to a strong man named Chet. They all worked at the amusement park, and Chet caught Bonko doing things with Mariana and it was a forced thing too it wasn't something that Mariana necessarily wanted so it wasn't consensual and therefore it was the R word this infuriated Chet Chet chased Bonko throughout the amusement park and finally cornered him at the cotton candy machine in the park throughout this whole thing Bonko was taunting Chet basically asking to be pummeled into the dirt at the very least, but we find out that Chet actually picks him up, sticks him in the cotton candy machine, and apparently the cotton candy machine has blades. I've never seen one up close, but I don't know how those work, but he was chopped to bits in the cotton candy machine the whole time, joking around, making fun of the guy, and his body parts were just flying everywhere. Obviously, Chet ended up going to prison but Bonko died and Ruth wanted to rebuild the amusement park after his death I don't I think it was about 10 years later and of course the park would not have been complete without the cotton candy machine that Bonko ultimately met his end by so she brought it back she was using it to create cotton candy to give to guests at the end of a ride and maybe even to pass out at some of the shops. Biting into this cotton candy caused whoever ate it to turn into a crazy clown just like Bonko. It was black cotton candy, but the way I imagined it was like, you know, the color of blood when it dries. It's not quite black, but it does darken quite a lot. And it's still kind of that really dark red color. Sort of like the cotton candy in Bonko's graphic here. <laughs> But it, but it kind of reminded me of that. So enough people ate this cotton candy to wreak havoc in the park, killing anybody that they could get their hands on. The park was closed for some reason, I guess, until police arrived. So it was it literally was the massacre at the amusement park. But that's Bonko's contribution. At the end, it turns out that his soul was still alive in that cotton candy machine. So whenever I think Ruth opened it up, it showed his face in a cotton candy form if they were to turn this into a movie which that's how this was written it was it was written very cinematically and I thought that was a cool style that Robertson implemented if they did turn this into a movie I, it would kind of be interesting to see how they would create Bonko's face in the cotton candy uh, but overall Bonko is the reason why this story happened in the first place so without him we would have nothing Moving on to Candy. Candy was a little bit boring for a final girl. She really didn't contribute too much to the plot as far as I was concerned. She didn't have very many connections. She was always kind of meek and in the background. 
And that was part of her character that she was supposed to question herself and not feel comfortable dealing out the blows. But it was because Candy was so upset over her breakup with Rocky that Lee convinced her to get out and go to the amusement park that's freshly opened, newly opened, and just unwind a little bit. This wasn't something that Candy necessarily wanted to do. She kind of wanted to just lay in bed and drown in her tears, but Lee got her out. But overall, she just wasn't that exciting of a character. And the fact that her name was Candy and there were a lot of candy puns that came along with her character, I didn't really like that either. It just made things a little bit too easy and too on the nose. She just wasn't all that well fleshed out. And the fact that she was a final girl, th the only thing that made her interesting was when she herself bit into the cotton candy and she turned into a clown temporarily herself before Lee injected her with a shot that changed her back. But it just seemed like all of these things had to be forced in order for her to be even somewhat interesting. Like she had to eat the cotton candy she had to have the name Candy for people to make jokes. Otherwise, she was just very bland for one of the stars. Moving on to Lee, who was the other final girl who was not boring. I actually really liked Lee. She ran the risk of coming across as a not-like-other-girls type of female character, but she never came across that way. She never exuded that sort of aura when she spoke and interacted with people. So... I really appreciated that. <laughs> Plenty of girls love rock and roll and have that rock star attitude. And she represented that very well. She had a rivalry with Rocky. She was also upset that he cheated on Candy. And when he showed up to the amusement park, Lee would not leave him alone with her. She was constantly in the way, butting in. And of course, this didn't make Rocky happy, but... We'll get to him in a second. Lee was also in a relationship with Rocky's best friend, Cliff. Lee and Cliff broke up either right before or right after Rocky and Candy broke up, just out of solidarity. But it turns out that the rivalry between Lee and Rocky and the real reason that Lee and Cliff broke up was it was revealed a little later that Lee had a crush on Candy. And I'll be, I'll be honest, I've read enough books now to where I've seen lesbian, gay, and bi relationships not be represented and revealed in a very flattering way. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> so I really did like how Robertson ultimately revealed Lee's feelings for Candy because when that happened, a lot of things made sense and it felt like he planned her character a little bit more just based on how this revelation came about. And I think all things considered, with this being a slasher book, I thought he handled her coming out pretty well, especially compared to some of the other books I've read. So that was nice. Another thing that Lee had in this, in this novel that I liked was a familial relationship with both Mac and Clark. I believe Clark was her stepbrother, and Mac was one of her mother's exes. The relationship that she had with Clark, we didn't really get to see. Clark was kind of dragged along to the amusement park too, but Lee was devastated when Clark ultimately passed away. I think they had a sort of a, a brother-sister relationship where they would rag on each other all the time, you know, that sort of thing. But I don't think Lee really had any family that she was close to in her life. So Clark was one of the connections that she had. And when he passed away, of course, she was devastated to lose him because he was, even though he was her stepbrother, he was her brother. That was the closest thing that she had, at least on a day-to-day -day basis. But then she had Mac, who was her mother's ex-boyfriend, who she was also really close with. He was a security guard at the amusement park when it reopened. And he always treated her like a daughter when he was dating her mother. That really showed in the novel itself how he snuck her into the park and how he treated her, even when he was forced to take her and Rocky to the the little timeout area, I guess, in the amusement park. You know, he treated her well. He didn't want her to 
get hurt or hurt anybody else or get into any other trouble. But when he was ultimately killed in the novel as well, she was just done. The only person really that she had she was close with was Candy. And I think that all of these pressures just ultimately made her come out with the truth that she had feelings for Candy. So Lee, overall, a very dynamic character. I enjoyed her a lot when she was first introduced. I thought she would be my favorite character of the whole novel, but somebody else kind of took that spot as the novel went on. But Lee was still very, very, very good. I was happy to see her as one of the, quote, final girls. She ultimately got the kill that helped her and Candy get away anyway. So, you know, more power to her. I think she was the main one. Even though Candy was presented as the main final girl, I think it was Lee. Anyway, moving on to Rocky. So he was the pretty boy. So there was there was plenty of objectification in this novel, but Rocky got all of the male objectification. He was shirtless through the first one third of the novel, and then he ripped his shirt off when he turned into a clown. So, <laughs> I mean, he was, and he was constantly called pretty boy. But beyond that and his track star background, he did have a rival with Lee, as I said. So he and she butt heads all the time. They were very similar, but I did like Lee more. But he was also best friends with Cliff. It was odd because Rocky and Cliff and Candy and Lee almost had mirrored relationships. Both pairs had their own little, not necessarily a secret handshake, but like um, a little phrase that they would say say to each other. Like, me and you, best friends for life. Something like that, but it was uh, some sort of silly little rhyme or something like that. So that was kind of odd that... They had very similar relationships. But Rocky's whole thing was that he was trying to get back with Candy after being caught cheating with Cat at some lookout place. You know, those places that teens used to go all the time to hook up. It turned out at the end of the day that Lee, I believe, set up Clark to go spy on Rocky and Cat to see what they were up to. And it did turn out that Rocky and Cat kissed at whatever that place was, the lookout hill. And that's ultimately what caused Rocky and Candy to break up. Rocky woke up at the beginning of the story to his car being destroyed. And he thought it was Candy being so upset over the breakup. But it turns out, of course, that that was actually Lee. Lee was much angrier and took action. So there was a lot going on with Rocky there. So he was a little bit more complex than just this pretty boy who ran track. He, he ultimately is the reason why Mariana snapped out of her trance after eating the cotton candy. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that once I get to Mariana. But when he turned into a clown, Rocky wasn't full evil. I, it, and it never really was explained why. He kind of avoided turning into the sinister clown that everybody else turned into. So that was kind of odd because when he found candy, I guess the the plot of the story was like his love was too strong that he couldn't hurt her or something like that so i don't know but he re he really didn't hurt anybody when he was a clown so yeah that was never really explained so much but ultimately he did die as well there was a lot of death in this moving on to sully i think she was the first character to eat the cotton candy at least in the novel there were a lot of nameless clowns by the way and that was a bit of a distraction but sully was the first named character i believe to eat the cotton candy she was asked by her sister millie who is not on this list to watch her triplets um while she and her either boyfriend or husband i can't remember his name like orville or something like that rode a ride he's also not on this list the triplets were a complete disaster they were horrible and they ultimately caused sully to lose her job sully's family life wasn't that great either though uh, she had a father who was extremely creepy and would do things to her which were not detailed luckily in this book but it was implied it was mentioned and sully had this job at the amusement park to kind of get away from her family and when she was fired from her job being a face painter her sister brought her some cotton candy to try to cheer her up. She went to the bathroom to eat it by herself and 
sob about her situation, which I don't blame her. And eventually those sobs became giggles because the cotton candy started to affect her and she became Sully the Clown. Her sister Millie came to check on her because Sully was in the bathroom for quite a while. And uh, needless to say, Millie did not leave that bathroom after that. Um, (laughs) That was the first major death in the story outside of Bonko, of course. But yeah, overall, I was kind of okay with with the sister's death in that case. I did feel bad for Sully, though, for turning into a clown and becoming one of these monsters that were wreaking havoc on the amusement park because her story outside of being a clown was just so sad and I felt for her. But she did become one just like everybody else. And she really didn't have that sort of love, I guess, that Rocky had for other people because she just didn't feel like anybody loved her in return. Segue into Clark, who actually had a crush on her. I think that they were in art class together and Clark would always look at her and was very attracted to her, but was always too afraid to ask her out or anything like that. So Sully and Clark eventually met each other when Sully was a clown and that turned into disaster and that was too bad too because Clark was professing his attraction to Sully and Sully was buying it as she should because it was true but ultimately because of Sully's transformation and the fact that she was eating eyeballs and stuff and was trying to share that with Clark didn't really work out and you know I don't blame Clark for refusing literal ice cream So, unfortunately for Clark, Sully didn't appreciate it, and she ended up killing him. But that was so sad, because he was one person who actually liked her for who she was, and when she was transformed, she just couldn't see that for herself. Moving on to Mariana, we've talked about her a lot, but she didn't really have many relationships outside of what I've already mentioned She was a fortune teller at the amusement park before the whole incident with Bonko and Chet. I already talked about Bonko's relationship with her and how that was dealt with, um, with Chet ultimately killing Bonko. But she returned to her job. I don't believe she really enjoyed it very much. She was one of the people who ate the cotton candy and turned into a clown herself. She was a very seductive clown. She was the female version of Rocky, basically. She was certainly the exhibitionist. She flaunted her body at at every turn and even convinced one of her guests to strip down where she ultimately bit something off. Um... (laughs) This is such a weird thing to talk about. Like, I don't, I don't talk about this. Like, I don't like talking about this sort of thing. But she did. She, she did the thing. Uh, she had, like, glass teeth when she turned into a clown. But fast forward to kind of near the end. I can't, I, I believe it was Rocky because he loved candy so much that when he ate the cotton candy that I believe Mariana force fed him, you know, she was, she was, Throughout the story, when she met Rocky, she was trying to to get with him and to um, perform certain acts with him. Uh, But when she finally got him to eat the cotton candy so that she could become one of them, a clown too, he was so in love with candy that it triggered this response in Mariana where she remembered her love for Chet. And it snapped her out of her trance, at least temporarily, to where she was being taunted by Bonko in his little cotton candy state, in his cotton candy form. And she snapped out of it at least long enough to set the cotton candy machine on fire and kill Bonko's soul once and for all. Mariana overall was a pretty sympathetic character too. Like Sully, she was forced into these situations that she herself couldn't fight her way out of. And personally, I liked her as a character. I think that, yeah, she was promiscuous and she flaunted her body a lot. But there was a tragic story to her and I I don't know, I kind of liked her for that. Moving on to Cliff, we did talk about his relationship with Lee and his relationship with Rocky, but Cliff was another character that I 
really enjoyed in this novel. But I, I do kind of want to move to Stacy as well and kind of talk about Cliff and Stacy together. This pair is my favorite pair. Stacy is my favorite character. I didn't expect her to be. I thought that she was just going to be this background bratty child in the story, but she turned out to be the best character in the novel for me. So Cliff and Stacy are brother and sister, and we find out after they go to the park and the characters begin to eat the cotton candy that Ruth deals out that Stacy is diabetic. And so once she takes just a little nibble of cotton candy, I think she only licks her fingers and it affects her just like it affects everybody else. Cliff returns and she ends up fainting and Cliff believes that it's a reaction from the cotton candy with her diabetes. He doesn't realize that you know, this is how it's happening to everybody else. But he runs to his car. He leaves her with Cliff. Uh, he leaves her with Clark. Cliff runs to the car to retrieve her injections. This whole time, Clark is taking Stacy to the, the medical ward at the park. She is passed out. Her lips are turning blue. It's a very dire situation. But once Clark makes it to the med ward, the doctor checks her out. And she opens her eyes, she lashes onto the doctor and bites his neck because she has become a clown too. So Clark ends up hiding in one of the lockers in the medical ward and Stacy is trying desperately to get to him. Cliff ultimately comes back with the injections and plunges it into her. She passes out again and the two boys, I don't know if... Clark goes with them, but I know that Cliff and Stacy end up being scooped up by Reese and taken to the big top. Stacy doesn't wake up, I don't believe, until she and Cliff are together and trapped, but she returns to normal. And this, of course, upsets Ruth, who had this grand plan to have all of these clowns and humans perform a show. So Ruth gives Cliff and Stacy two ultimatums in this book. The first one is that one of them is going to have to eat the cotton candy and perform in the show. It either has to be Cliff or Stacy. And Cliff knows that these clowns are brutal and they are going to kill the humans. So if Stacy is to live, she is more than likely going to end up being clown food. So he lets her eat the cotton candy again. They have this really sweet brother sister moment, and Stacy becomes a clown once more. The second ultimatum happens with the dunk tank. So, you know, those little dunk tanks with the baseball, and you have to throw them at a target to drop whoever's sitting in the dunk tank into the water. So that's what it is. Ruth, again, lets Cliff choose whether or not he wants to sit in the dunk tank, and he doesn't do it. So Stacy ends up sitting in it. And in order to dunk her, I think he has to hit the target three times. He hits it twice. She ends up losing a shoe in the, quote, water. It turns out to be acid, and so he ends up missing on purpose so that she doesn't die. So as a result of losing, he ends up sitting in the dunk tank and Stacy throws the baseballs and she ultimately dunks her brother and she doesn't, you know, obviously, and of course she doesn't realize that she's dunking her brother because she's in this crazed state. All this time, Stacy is throwing the balls at the dunk tank. You know, Cliff is trying to snap her out of it, saying how much he loves her and how he's proud of her and all this stuff. And damn it, Christopher Robertson for making two characters that I really liked and really cared for and I didn't want either of them to die. <laughs> but it ended up happening that Cliff fell into the acid and he ended up perishing as well, which is horrible. Um, and Stacy never comes out of her clown form either because the other injection is used to bring candy back. I kind of mentioned that before, but I didn't really explain the whole situation. But Lee used that uh, injection to transform candy back into a human, basically. But Stacy did have a little moment of badassery when she hunted down 
Sully's abusive father and kills him at a gas station. So Stacy overall, like she, she kind of killed it. <laughs> she, she was a great character. I really enjoyed her part of the story. Like I said, I thought that she was just going to be this background bratty kid the whole time. But it turns out that not only was the injections for her diabetes, the solution to bring other people back from this crazy sugar high but she also had a really cool relationship with her brother and by the way the the pinching fingers she um she would constantly mock him that that was the size of his woohoo uh and that is the reason why he and lee broke up so that's that's the whole reason for the pinch and and plus she had a pinch of cotton candy that um Cliff knocked out of her hands and she licked her fingers and she turned into a clown. But anyway, she had all of these really good moments and I don't know, I liked Stacy. I thought she of all the characters in this character soup, I thought she was the standout and she was the one who really made this book for me. So, good job. Good job Christopher Robertson for making a kid who was more entertaining than everybody else. Now on to Ruth. I talked about her briefly uh, when I mentioned her bringing the amusement park back after Bonko's death. This was about 10 years later after his demise in the cotton candy machine. She is this super power hungry, really in your face leader type character. And she had this sidekick named Reese who followed her and would do whatever she wanted him to do including certain favors. <laughs> but yeah, she was the big bad of the whole thing. You would think that Bonko would be the main villain, but no, Ruth was. This was Ruth's show. She's the person who set up the park. She's the one who set up the ride. She's the one who brought the cotton candy machine back and dealt it out to people. It's kind of like she knew exactly what was going to happen. What I thought was so cool about Ruth, she didn't have too too much screen time but you knew that she was going to be the big bad pretty early on you just felt it just because she had that energy about her but what made her so cool was that she was so full of herself she had such an ego that her death so first of all her eyes were plucked out so she couldn't really see anything so she didn't know that when the police arrived you know what what really was going on she probably did because they told her to stop and put her hands up, whatever. But the way that she went out, they sprayed her with bullets and in her mind, it was applause. Those moments where you were in her head, you could kind of see her view was completely distorted. She saw people who were happy and cheering for her and wanting more and enjoying the show when, in fact, you know, they were all humans who were tied down to their seats and really had no choice. They were terrified. But in her mind, with her ego, you know, she was so power hungry that she thought that everybody was there for her and her show and her creation that ultimately when she passed, she thought that she was going out to applause. It was it was crazy. I thought Ruth was was really well done. I liked her her character. I liked her level of crazy. I thought that she was a good big bad. So I enjoyed her character a lot. There wasn't too much else to talk about, but she was another no pun intended, she was another show stealer <laughs> for me. Moving on to Reese, there really isn't much to say about him other than he was described as a monkey from time to time. When he turned into a clown, he met these strangers and he asked the girl, it was a couple, to hit him as hard as she could and she was too afraid to do it. She was like, you are a creep. Don't, you know, back off. Her boyfriend eventually came into the picture and gave Reese exactly what he wanted. <laughs> he ended up punching him in the face and, and punching him and punching him and punching him until ultimately the boyfriend's arm broke. Reese didn't even care. Like it didn't even phase him. He enjoyed the pain. And I think that all of the clowns kind of felt that too. But Reese was especially masochistic when it came to enjoying and sponging these blows and this pain over and over again. It was mentioned multiple times that he walked and ran like a monkey. So that's why he has the monkey face. Uh, his his biggest role, though, was to pleasure Ruth in multiple ways. Um, but really, there wasn't much else to Reese. There were a lot of misspellings of his name. 
in the book. Most of the time it was Reese, and I knew that his name was Reese. Sometimes his name would show up as R-E-S-S-E, like Ress, and that just wasn't right and that was the most glaringly obvious spelling error in this novel and it kind of took me out from time to time but overall Reese really wasn't that interesting he ultimately was eaten by the shark so yay I mentioned the shark moving on to Clark (laughs) rhymes with shark (laughs) there really isn't much else to talk about with Clark either except it is revealed by Rocky I believe that Lee set up Clark to spy on Rocky and Kat, and that's how Lee found out about the whole cheating situation. Um, I don't think Lee ever showed up there. I think that, and obviously that's why, because he would recognize her. So instead she used Clark as a pawn, and that's what happened. I think I told you guys already about Sully and Clark, but yeah, he had a crush on Sully, and she ended up killing him. So that sucked. He was definitely a background character. Uh, no- nothing really stood out. And he did have that really cliche, I can't see without my glasses sort of line. And I, eh, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of that. I mean, I know that part of this book's charm is to use cliches, especially ones from the 80s. But it's just like, eh, that one's so played out. <laughs> so many stories, so many shows. It's so Scooby-Doo. So yeah, moving on to Mac. Again, I don't really have that much to talk about, except I don't think I mentioned... I did mention the fact that Mac took Lee and Rocky to the little timeout area in the amusement park so that they can calm down because they got into a fight. Mac, uh, when Rocky was attempting to enter the amusement park through one of the back ways um he wasn't supposed to go in that way mac was the one who chased him and cliff rocky and cliff split up and mac focused on rocky during their first run mac ended up being squished i guess the uh, an outhouse toppled over on top of him with the door open and obviously a mess happened (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so Mac was not too fond of Rocky and this was be- this was before Rocky knew Lee's relationship with Mac. So it was kind of interesting when they were reintroduced <laughs> that Mac had a little had a bigger role than originally realized. Mac had a sawed off shotgun named Bessie or Betsy, I believe. I can't remember the name of the shotgun, but he loved it. He used it on a few clowns, and he ultimately sacrificed himself to save the kids, or to save the teens, which was very noble of him. He mostly did it for Lee, of course, just because of that relationship, and of course his death devastated Lee, just like Clark's did. But yeah, overall, he was a villain who turned into a bit of a selfless hero, even though his sacrifice was two-thirds not in vain. Cliff and Stacy weren't with them at the time, and Clark was already gone. Um, But yeah, Rocky, he let Rocky, Candy, and Lee go so that they could find Cliff and Stacy. Um, And as I've already said, Candy and Lee ended up being the final girls. So he, he did a good thing. He saved the right people because at least two of them were able to escape the park, including the one that he probably intended to save the most. Now with Kat, I talked a a lot about Rocky cheating on Candy with her. There was a number of reveals about that. And when Rocky was trying to escape from Mac, he actually found Kat working at one of the stalls and she allowed him to hide while Mac was searching for him. He waited a few seconds for Mac to go away and Kat, you know, motioned him to come out once the coast was clear. Of course, at that time, Candy and Lee and Clark were walking up and they saw them together again. So it didn't really help Rocky's case, considering the whole reason Rocky snuck into the amusement park was to tell Candy that he loved her. It wasn't too good for them to see Rocky and Cat together in a stall. And I, I don't think that they were necessarily kissing, but I do think that they were holding each other because Cat helped Rocky up. Um, I can't remember. Maybe they were hugging. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, But yeah, that was a mistake. Ultimately, though, Cat and Candy end up together on a Ferris wheel so that Cat could kind of explain the situation. And even though Cat loved Rocky and wanted him to love her back, he knew that Candy loved him and that he actually 
loved her and Kat supported that relationship ultimately in the end. But when they were stuck on the Ferris wheel, the clowns started coming out. They had no idea as the Ferris wheel was going around, there was a fire, like a bonfire at the bottom of the Ferris wheel. So of course they thought that they were going to die. But ultimately they jumped out of the Ferris wheel before it hit the bottom, which is where the fire was. Candy ended up injuring herself there. And I believe Kat went back to help some of the other guests that were on the Ferris wheel. She helped them climb down too so that they wouldn't meet the same fate as everybody else before them. So she rescued some more people, but she ultimately was burned alive. And that that was such a horrible death because poor Cat. Cat was Cat was all in all, Cat was a sweetheart. I think she was caught in the whole situation, um, especially the whole cheating situation. I don't think that she necessarily knew that Rocky and Candy were together. And the the heart to heart with Candy was really nice as well on the Ferris wheel. So it was just too bad that. She met her end there. She ended up being a lot more important than I thought before I did this web. So, yeah, that's her story. And then the last two, these are certainly minor characters. The triplets, I think their names were Tommy, Tyler, and Trixie. Um, I don't know about Tommy. I don't know if that's the right name, but maybe. These three were awful before they were even clowns. And I think the reason Robertson turn them into clowns was to have a way to hurt other kids <laughs> at the park and get away with it because they were definitely the ones that went after the kids but they also went after Neville that was his name not Orville it was Neville uh, and they killed him too I believe they dragged him into a ball pit and turned him into a pit I don't know really what became of them they were just kind of like these three little clowns who jumped around but they were monsters to begin with i hated them i i was very sad that sully lost her job as a result of millie throwing them at her millie was awful awful mother and neville was an awful father so you know i was kind of okay with those two not making it but yeah so the triplets eh, i didn't really care for them they were just kind of there so yeah that's all i have to say about them they were monsters they were gross and then the shark if this were turned into a movie the shark would definitely be the jump scare of the whole movie he showed up a couple of times the first time was on a ride and he was in his normal form and he was still scary and then ruth fed him some cotton candy because this was like ruth ruth's pet Um, Ruth fed him some cotton candy and he became like a clown shark (laughs) and uh, for this so I didn't really tell you guys that part of Ruth's plan was to make the humans go through trials basically um, little mini games in order to live and the mini game that included the shark I I told you guys about the dunk tank with Cliff and Stacy But where the shark was concerned, it was one of those uh, ladders that had one rope tied on each end that are almost impossible to climb. I know that there's a way to do it, but if you teeter on one side or the other a little bit too much, then you flip upside down. Have you seen those at amusement parks? Um, that, That was the challenge that Lee had to perform in order to survive and lee was doing a great job she was distributing her weight we had a whole not a whole lesson i mean she kind of talked about it it was kind of it kind of came across as christopher robertson being like i know how this works and i'm gonna let everybody know about it sort of thing (laughs) you know a little factoid put in the novel which is kind of a pet peeve of mine from time to time but you know i'll let it slide lee was doing a great job she was distributing her weight just as you're supposed to do when you do this little this little mini game this little challenge and of course the ladder was right above the shark tank so who comes up but Reese to wiggle the wiggle the ladder and try to get Lee to fall in but Lee was like "Uh uh-uh I'm not gonna die on my own I'm taking you down with me so she grabs Reese she pulls him into the shark tank and she falls in afterwards but the shark I guess seeing Reese first gnaws away at him and takes him under and finishes him off while Lee climbs out of the the shark tank so lee of course has an exchange with ruth ruth is upset that her boy toy is gone and ruth 
moves Lee back to the cage to await another challenge at a later time. And that's how Lee ultimately was given enough time to escape the whole situation. So yeah, and we learned early on that the clowns really don't care about each other either. It was shown at the Ferris wheel while the fire was going on that there were a couple of nameless clowns kind of joking around, or at least that's what it looked like. And one of the clowns ended up killing the other one. So just because Reese was a clown himself doesn't mean that the shark was going to not do anything to him. There really is no discrimination <laughs> between the clowns. It's just, I guess, that they tolerate pain a little bit better. Mariana was burned, I think, and she was just like, I'm okay with this. They're very pain tolerant. Oh, and I didn't say this before with Stacy. Uh, speaking of knowing things in advance and kind of seeing how things would play out, the thing with Stacy and her diabetes, I kind of wish they would have introduced that early on. I did like that the injections were there to snap the clowns out of their sugar trance. But I wish that there were some indications early on that Stacy was not allowed to have candy or have sweets. Like maybe she could have stolen some cookies when she was at Rocky's house that Cliff could have slapped out of her hand or something like that. Even though the injections weren't super duper convenient, it, it still kind of came across that way. And it would have been nice to have some sort of indication that Stacy was not allowed to have sweets before we got to that point. Um, but otherwise, you know, for the mood that I was in at the time, because I did read through this book a little bit, again, to freshen up my knowledge on the characters to do this relationship web, it was certainly a mood read, and when I read it again, I was not really in the mood. <laughs> so purchase this book if you want to. Like with anything, the link to its Goodreads page is in the description. Go there and pick the retailer of your choice that you want to put, purchase this book from, or if it's in the library, you can borrow it from there. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this crazy web. It's pretty, it's pretty tangled now. Um, but yeah, I've been Jim. You've been great. Happy reading.